We begin tonight with breaking news in Otay Mesa West, where San Diego police are searching for an armed suspect, and they are urging residents in that area to stay indoors. Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Alicia Summers. According to police, the suspect is wanted for a violent crime in the area of 3700 Rosalinda Street. Residents are being asked to shelter in place. That suspect described as a Hispanic man in his late 20s, about 160 pounds. He was wearing a black T-shirt, blue jeans, and has a neck and face tattoos. We're going to continue to follow this and we will bring you any more details as soon as they become available. Now to our other top story tonight, a dramatic scene caught on camera. CHP officers risking their lives to pull an alleged drunk driver from a burning vehicle happened this morning on a local freeway. It started as a high speed chase reaching speeds of more than 100 miles an hour, but when the driver went off the side of Interstate 5, officers had little time to act. News 8's Teresa Sardina has more on this wild chain of events that started in Orange County. Steve and Alicia, it was a dangerous CHP pursuit that started in Irvine, ending in Oceanside. Officers say it was an unbelievable and rare experience. CHP officers rescue a man after a high speed chase, ending in a fiery crash early Saturday morning. Uh, they extricated him from the vehicle and pulled him to safety. Sergeant Eric Nicholas says the chase started in the Irvine area, ending in Oceanside at the Santa Margarita River. Uh, Highway Patrol officers from the Capistrano area started a pursuit around 2.36 a.m. CHP reports the pursuit topping speeds of more than 100 miles per hour on southbound Interstate 5. That pursuit continued at high speeds up to about 125 miles per hour at times. The car lost control. Sergeant Nicholas says within minutes, right CHP officers went down the embankment. It's right there. Extinguisher. Multiple fire extinguishers were thrown down to officers. Made contact with the party who was trapped in his vehicle. CHP officers pulling the man out of the passenger side door. Camp Pendleton fire arrived shortly after and extinguished the fully engulfed car on fire. If they not pulled him to safety, he undoubtedly would have perished in the vehicle. CHP reports they believe the man was under the influence of alcohol. We don't have further information about the driver, but I spoke with CHP Oceanside on the phone this afternoon, and they say that the San Juan Capistrano Division is handling the investigation. Steve and Alicia. Teresa, thank you. San Diego County officials are reporting 711 new COVID cases today. Out of over 18,000 tests, 4% came back positive. COVID hospitalizations continue to trend downwards, now at 675. ICU count is also down by 8, now at 224. Our available ICU capacity stands at 25%, and the county's adjusted case rate is 22.2. 19 additional deaths were reported today. That total is now 3,188. More changes for vaccination stations across the county as we await more shipments from Moderna and Pfizer. Today, UC San Diego Health announced that the Petco Park Superstation will extend its closure through at least Monday. Canceled appointments will be automatically rescheduled, but Cal Fire San Diego opened up new appointments for the Carlsbad and Cuyamaca College vaccination sites. Both locations can accommodate first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine. And with the Petco Park site closed, you might think that other super stations in the county would be packed, but that's not the case. Sharp says the Chula Vista and Grossmont locations have plenty of appointments this weekend leading some to wonder why the county hasn't opened up more groups to the shot. News 8's Heather Hope has more on the county's plans moving forward. We are inside what used to be Sears here in Chula Vista. You can see multiple open lanes and tables as volunteers await to assist people wanting to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. But many aren't taking advantage of this wide open opportunity and sharp doctors here have a few reasons why. There are plenty of appointments available here. With mass appointments up for grabs at the San Diego County South Bay Vaccination Superstation, many are wondering why. I couldn't give you a good reason why uh, those have not been snatched 
matched up. Our team is doing a great job getting the word out. This Chula Vista location can vaccinate 3,000 people a day with potential to reach 5,000 a day. But Friday, it only vaccinated 700 people and 2,100 people got the shot Thursday. But that was the last day the South Bay site had the Moderna vaccine before it ran out. Well, we're experiencing this beautiful weather. Other parts of the country are not, and uh, that's holding up our product coming from the Midwest. Now with Pfizer only available, 79-year-old Guy Nardini had no problem booking his 1.30 appointment online and getting the vaccine. I think there's a lot of people that should be here that aren't, and really it's something that, that everybody should do. But with slots open, when will the county open it up to other groups? There is conversation happening at the county of San Diego about um, how they'll open up the tiers. We take our direction uh, from them. That change could be coming soon. The first week of March, uh, we will be able to move into that first tier of essential workers, uh, teachers, food and agriculture, and law enforcement. For now, this Chula Vista site is open 10 to 5 on weekends and 10 to 7 on weekdays. Here's a 79-year-old man who didn't even feel the injection. Come on. What are you afraid of? Again, you can get the Pfizer vaccine right now or choose to await the Moderna vaccine whenever that shipment arrives. You just have to go to vaccination superstation SD.com for those health care workers and those 65 and up in the eligible groups. Steve and Alicia. President Biden has declared a major disaster in 77 Texas counties where residents are dealing with the aftermath of the deadly winter storm that left millions without power. Even days later, food and safe drinking water remain in short supply for many. Texans do not want to go through this again. They want accountability. They want to know why the system failed and quite frankly, almost broke. Officials are testing water samples to determine if it's safe to lift an advisory to boil tap water before drinking it. But for now, many Texans remain under that advisory. So what kind of conditions are people across the South dealing with as we head into tonight? For more on that and a first look at our microclimate forecast, here's meteorologist Sean Stiles. Boy, Sean. Oh, I mean, oh. I felt guilty going outside today, but... Oh, what are you going to do, yeah. right? I mean, look at us here. This is the temperatures right now, 61, 64 up in the uh, Los Angeles area. But take a look at the map here. Big changes over the past three or four days compared to what we saw at the beginning of the work week. Albuquerque, 61. Look at El Paso, 71, 48 in Dallas. That's a heat wave compared to what they've been seeing. You'll notice the cool air, though, has shifted in over parts of the Midwest, and that is all because of where the low pressure is right now. The cold air spilling down on the backside of it. Let's put this map into motion, and look how the flow goes basically zonal. Yeah, there's a little northwest twist into it, but high pressure building in over the southwest is warming up them and us. Take a look at our forecast temperatures over the next three days. 73 tomorrow, 73 on Monday. We'll see some wind pick up as well, but check out these temperatures in the inland microclimates. Steve, if you feel guilty now, wait till you get to Monday and that 80 degree reading. Steve and Alicia, back to you. While San Diegans would usually gather downtown to celebrate the Lunar New Year, this year that tradition will continue virtually but there's still going to be music and performances. Yeah, the 39th annual San Diego Chinese New Year Fair kicked off today online. And you can see a lot more of this two day live streamed event through Sunday. Just head to Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association's Facebook and YouTube pages.